Hello, viewers, and uh, wish you uh, again a very nice uh, good evening. Uh, so this is the second day of Navratri, and uh, we have our second Durga who is going to share with us uh, something very, very interesting. Actually, see the coincidence. I mean, uh, this talk show is all about, uh, you know, these things of managing uh, challenges managing things which come on your way but still uh, you have to fight through it you have to give it the best and uh, this is what is exactly happening just now during uh, this uh, chat when we are having that dr manisha she had an emergency uh, so she has to go for her operation in next 20 to 25 minutes. But nevertheless, she has obliged us directly coming online through her operation theater, through her OT. So uh, Manisha, we will not take a lot of time from you. Uh, but thank you very much for joining this chat show. We wish you a very, very happy Navratri also. And uh, to begin with, uh, and to start with, uh, let me uh, ask you that, you know, uh, how did you opt for this kind of a career where, you know, you never know that, you know, what is going to happen the next moment sometimes. And uh, definitely you are very honest and uh, you have a legacy as you have rightly mentioned. So we would like to have your thoughts on how did you begin your career? It is actually a very interesting topic to discuss, Mayura. And I'm so thankful to you that you have brought up this topic on such a lovely occasion of the year time, wherein lot many viewers, when they surf for Garba steps, they will be seeing our videos too. <laughs> and this is a sort of Garba in a woman's life, which she is enjoying. If at all, she is really willing to do it. So. The career with your routine lifestyle is a sort of garba and every step, if you do it gracefully, I think it makes it its own grace. So as a doctor, as an ophthalmologist, I have a whole family of doctors and I am so blessed that every one of us is doing very well in each one's field. My siblings are doctors, my parents were doctors. And here after marriage also, all my uh, first relation, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, everyone is in medicine. So my career as such was always targeted by my parents. They wanted the girl child, as, a, as you rightly are putting up this topic, that they found out that the girl child, when she comes into this faculty or this profession, is a very safe profession, not only as far as a career is concerned, it is very prestigious because it is a very respectful job that you are doing. And third thing is like it also pays back to you, not only in the form of money, but also in the form of respect in the society. So for a woman to be respectful in a society, always she looks around for a career which is really looked up as respectful. And in today's world, medicine is becoming a challenging branch because there is nothing like you can just do um, MBBS and finish off and start your practice. Now you have to look up to post-graduation and you have to look up to super specialization after doing the post-graduation. So for me in this career, though I thought that I would become a doctor and just that is it. No, it didn't end there. Because when I was finishing my MBBS, I was uh, going through arranged marriage. And during my uh, uh, courtship, I came to know that all my family members are eye specialists. And they would want their next coming member to be a part of their speciality. And uh, luckily, I had an option uh, wherein I can I could uh, take up ophthalmology as a branch for my super specialization. And uh, when I decided to go for doing ophthalmology, my challenges started becoming tough because I had not prepared ophthalmology to be my post-graduation subject. And when 25 years back, when we were just finishing our medicine MBBS, we had to score very good in the 
specialization subject so the subject in which you wanted to become a post graduate like md ms you had to have a very good uh, score in the final mbbs in that particular subject and so was it for ophthalmology and ent though they were called as minor subjects now i had never thought that i would go and marry a ophthalmologist at that time and so i didn't study much and then when they wanted ophthalmologists to come in the family it was a big challenge for me i loved surgery i was always for a surgical branch so i had thought about become a gynecologist at that time so whether it was a diploma or a md gynec i would have loved to do that but then this branch requires emergency uh, attending of patients like any time a lady can go into labor at night midnight 12 o'clock i can get a call and i go running to attend her and in ophthalmology there is nothing called as emergency so like even if you have some kachra going in your eye you just patch the eye and after 6 hours you go to the ophthalmologist he can remove the kachra for you you know so it was totally a diff- two diversion branches like and then i thought ki if i become a gynecologist and get married in this branch it would be very difficult for me to manage the house and the family okay so uh, then i said ki i need to do something about it and luckily we have this college of physicians and surgeons a special uh, private institution which gives you unregistered posts uh, affiliated fellowships so if you do five posts of ophthalmology which are recognized by this institution under those colleges you can register under them for a fellowship which is equivalent to ms ophthalmology so i used to go every 6 months searching for a post in all the colleges in bombay apply for those posts wait for their calls then i used to get the post and then do complete it for 6 months then register it with the institute and so doing i completed five posts and then finished my fellowship so that is how i did ophthalmology after doing ophthalmology there was next challenge and that was there were other four ophthalmologists in the family with whom i had to sit and do my opd okay so <laughs> they my father in law my mother in law had a full fledged well known very nice practice in the city where people recognize them with a very good name and they had a very heavy patient flow and sitting amongst them when i had to decide to go and do my opd it was like whether the patient will take me as the ophthalmologist with them whether they'll recognize me whether they'll want to show me because i was a newcomer and initially it did happen so that since my father in law was very had a very good reputation as ophthalmologist in the city and around uh, say around 200 300 kilometers around baroda all the villages and all the well known uh, small talukas and districts he had been doing his cams and he was uh, his name as dr subhash kadam was very well taken by people so at that time uh, any patient who came to the opd would say i want to show i am being referred to dr subhash kadam i have been asked to show sir and when i was sitting in the opd and when the staff would say no it is dr manisha kadam it is madam who is there that you will be seeing today the patient who used to refuse He used to say no i am here for dr subhash kadam i will not show her and it was taking my patience away and i didn't know how to convince the patient you can't force someone to show you when you are a doctor doctor a patient goes with a free will so i i waited for a couple of years used to sit patiently in the opd but every time the patients used to come outside they used to ask for dr subhash kadam and the staff would say no 
it is madam who is there they used to refuse at times some of them used to show if it, if it was a minor problem and some would refuse so i thought that this will not do because how will i then establish my practice and that was the time that my career set me a challenge ki okay, now manisha what next what should you do to become a good career professional in this field and there came into picture a super specialization so ophthalmology in itself has got super specialization as in cornea specialist as in lasik specialist or refractive surgery and cataract and refractive surgery uva specialist retina specialist all these are super specializations in ophthalmology so every part of the eye now has been divided into super speciality and you can go and do a fellowship of one and a half year or one year or six months in any of the great institutions which are ophthalmology institutes in all over india around 10 institutes are there which give you a fellowship wherein you can go and work only for that part of the eye and when you get experience with that you can come back and join the practice as a specialist for that part of the eye and that's what i did i went to lv prasad i did a short term fellowship in cornea and then i came back to the kadam eye hospital as a cornea specialist so today i am in my hospital working as a full fledged cornea surgeon a cornea consultant a super specialist for a super specialty contact lens clinic and simultaneously i am also practicing ocularistry that is a art of making customized prosthetic eyes for people who have lost their eyes so these were branches wherein my other people of the family were not touching the patients so these all patients were been directly referred to me and gradually i started developing my practice so today when i i am asked for i am asked for this super speciality mayura so it is really a challenge in itself when you just choose a career so i'm happy doing that so uh, i would like uh, viewers to pay attention to what manisha actually said you know in spite of having a legacy you know sometimes having a legacy itself becomes a challenge because yes. you know sometimes uh, we very jokingly say that you know uh, are uh, you know this he has inherited the wealth from his family or uh, he has inherited certain uh, techniques facilities from his family so life is not going to be a big challenge for that person but uh, if you hear to manisha very carefully that itself sometimes in this skillful professions uh, become a challenge and exactly. uh, you have to overcome these challenges uh, in a very soft skill manner you know because okay. uh, you cannot be very strategic over here because there is family on one side and yes. there is your career on one side and you always have to find that uh, mid path and finding out a mid path i feel is always a uh, every woman's uh, you know it, uh, it's the biggest thing which she can do on this earth because otherwise you know all the families which we see around uh, i mean uh, she is the one who is the newcomer in that family and she is the one who has to adjust so many things so that is something very exciting and uh, then manisha you have to tell us that uh, one is this challenge which you overcame but once your life started you know once the family started uh, what were the other difficulties and how did you manage uh, that stuff also because that is something uh, which the viewers would like to listen yeah i mean it started with the marriage itself when we got married my husband was studying i was studying so we were not together he was doing his dnb in ophthalmology at navsari and i was doing my fellowship in mumbai so in the first three years post marriage we used to meet just couple of times in couple of months and all the meeting was mostly on telephone at that time there were no mobiles only pagers were there 
they were also recently put in so we used to fit, fix up some time on this day that day at this particular time i will i will be there at the pco you call me or i will call you and we used to talk on that at times there was to be a big line on the pco if it was a saturday sunday all the girls from the hostel will be lined up on the pco <laughs> and then it used to get too late because he was doing his residency too so he had to start his day early so we would not talk so there was like this was a tying thing and at times i used to cry on the phone telling him i don't want to do this fellowship i want to come back it's okay i'll just be a, a assistant to you or something like that i don't want to further nurture my career but both my in laws as well as my husband were very encouraging on the fact that i should be having my own branch and my own practice so like they never they always would have loved me to help them in theirs but they they respected my independent thoughts they respected my independence that was one thing mayura and like for two and a half years we were apart after which we started planning our family so after coming back joining the practice as i told you couple of years there were no patients so then i thought i was 28 at that time and i thought then it's a good time to plan a family so we thought about our first child now first child i was 28 when i was pregnant for the first time and as such usually when you start reaching 30 it's not a good thing to plan your pregnancies because late pregnancies are known to have their own complications but during my first trimester i had a fall of down a flight of stairs and i was not aware i had conceived at that time and i had a threatened abortion so i was put into bed rest for 3 months not to move from the bed and i was totally stuck to the bed so there was no no going to the clinic no practice no career <laughs> only the baby and me and through that i got through the pregnancy so it was a precious child because my placenta was right at the mouth of the uterus and my doctor used to ask me avoid too much of moving around luckily i had a healthy baby with a full term uh, but i uh, had i was i mean i went through the labor i could not get through a normal delivery so i had to go for a caesar i was in labor for almost 18 hours but there were some issues in the birth canal and i could not give a normal baby a delivery so i went through a cesarean section now after cesarean section there nowadays they mobilize you very fast but still with the baby with your uh, uh, the scar with your pain and everything you have to further give yourself time and then the whole thing started so like those another 6 7 months post delivery were taken with the baby and what happened is like i was just moving away from the practice and it was taking up my patience mayur i can't hear you i can't see you hello i can't see you now i can't hear you am i connected hello
हेलो so i am continuing with this mayura because uh, this is a very interesting story and like after my daughter anushri became 6 months old i used to take her with me in the chair car to the clinic and i used to take a caretaker along with me keep her in the side room and along with her i started doing my opds when she became 4 years old we planned for the second baby it was a baby boy and since it was a post cesarean child again i went through cesarean section for him and when he was 3 years old i went to lv prasad to do cornea so this was my challenge in the career and it was fruitful at the end of it today when i am sitting here today with what reputation my hospital my career takes me through i am very happy because i am happy that i took a good decision the right decision my family was there supporting me my people were there supporting me and you have to be determined that is what i would say thank you for talking to me and i wish all the parents and all the viewers the girls especially who are still on the brim of deciding their career to not to be scared of taking up your career if you are if you are freely going to be um yeah i can see you now mayura yeah can sorry uh, actually i missed uh, the internet connection uh, for some time so i don't know whether i was live you have to go back and check out no uh, no your uh, recording has been done okay done, so na? you were live i, I had missed, missed the, i missed the connection so uh, okay. yes uh, so you want you wanted to complete something can you complete that please yeah yeah so i completed it it's there and uh, i was just trying to tell my viewers today if they are all girls who are on the deciding brim wherein they want to know whether they should go for certain careers so yes i would say you go ahead take mbbs though it is a costly profession now to tell you the truth my daughter has recently got into her ophthalmology after seeing both of us doing very good at it she was encouraged as she had initially started to thinking with becoming a veterinary doctor but now she has changed and got into medicine finished her mbbs and just recently got admitted for ms ophthal so we are getting one more ophthalmologist into the legacy and i am so happy because it's my daughter so when you are saying it's a girl child and she is thinking about it i think i have done the right thing to have chosen this career because i am promoting and i am encouraging my daughter to do the same too so there it speaks for itself what more should i say yeah manisha so thank you very much uh, for removing this uh, short time quickly from your busy schedule and uh, as you rightly said you know you have to lead by example so this is what uh, you know this is the reason why i organized this forum where i want to showcase people like you so that you know the other parents get motivated and you know there is there are a lot of fear factors which are there 
but when they hear uh, it from parents like you from mothers like you it becomes a little easier for them to take such uh, you know challenging decisions when a daughter come up with such uh, challenging careers you know and as you very very rightly mentioned all these careers nowadays are uh, extremely expensive so when the parents are also uh, investing their lifetime worth into it uh, yeah. they need kind of security you know so yes. these kind of it has to be might... properly planned it has to be yes. properly planned i would definitely say that because yes. it is not something like a fashion you know just because yeah. parents are doctors kids should be doctors no i would not say don't do that but yes. if at all you can plan properly you should promote this because we need doctors in the society and good doctors definitely so that's the whole thing yeah so i feel that uh, all all these motivational words uh, might help the families to take a better decision for their girl child and so thank you manisha we again uh, wish you a very very happy navratri and you can yeah. please proceed to your ot i was uh, going to be there in the white today the white du yeah. durga because today is yeah. the white day of navratri but i'm sorry i have to be in my blues but i am happy to be in my blues also mayura it was great yeah. talking to you and this is a very very important topic that you are handling and hope all the other durgas whom you have invited all these days are also helpful to all the viewers and wish them also a very happy navratri and every one of those who are watching us a very very happy navratri to you make this navratri a very very celebrating one and a very joyous one wish you all the best thank you thank you and goodbye goodbye bye